In the 1920s and 1930s, across America's bustling cities and quaint small towns, an era of infamy and legend was born. In these streets, a fearsome reputation was forged in a blaze of bullets. John Dillinger. Pretty Boy Floyd. Babyface Nelson. Al Capone. Bonnie and Clyde. These names evoke vivid images of outlaw whiskey, daring bank holdups, and ferocious shootouts. The Racine Police Department had lost one of its members to the John Dillinger gang, and any time that they encountered a member of that gang, they gave him their undivided attention, as good cops will. Late in 1933, they sacked up Leslie Homer, who was a runner for the Dillinger gang, took him downtown and sweated him. And the words from Homer spilled out into newspapers and police stations all over the country. And one of the things he said was that if you want to give your coppers an even break, you need to get them one of those new Super 38 guns. A gun of that type will blow a hole in any bulletproof vest made. The guns that became their symbols were just as notorious. The Colt 45s and 38s, the infamous Tommy gun, the Whippet guns, and the mighty Browning automatic rifle. Their daring exploits dominated the headlines, captivating a nation but it was their choice of firepower that truly brought them into the spotlight of fame and notoriety. In the face of fire with bullets whizzing by their head, they seemed entirely unaffected by that. So some of these jobs they pulled uh, might have been extraordinarily difficult. Actually, you could buy them on the commercial market. Uh, Colt did make a commercial model, the R-75, and the Colt Monitor was available if, if somebody had enough money. Colt tried to regulate who the guns went to, but it was quite easy to have a front man. There were several gunsmiths in Chicago, uh, in the Illinois areas, who, who, would buy, who would purchase weapons for the underworld. The gangsters of this era were innovative in their choice of weaponry employing easily concealed pocket guns, and they were pioneers in adopting automatic weapons, a domain previously reserved for the military. Pocket guns to me bring back a more civilized era. Uh, I, I very much believe in politeness and uh, being courteous to one another. And uh, you should do it of your own volition. But in the 20s and 30s, and it didn't matter if you were in Chicago or if you were in South Georgia or if you were somewhere in the Midwest or Arizona, you were polite to someone if for no other reason you didn't know what they had their hand on in their pocket. And so it would behoove you to be on your best behavior. Not insult a man's lady, don't kick his dog, leave his children alone because he just might reach in his pocket and put a bullet in you. Well, right now, I'm loading the magazine for a Colt 1903 pocket pistol uh, in 32 caliber. And this was a very popular, very common caliber, and very common pistol from about 1903 up until just recently here. I'm placed it into the magazine of the hollow of the gun. A uh, gun just about like this was used by Bonnie Parker to break uh, Clyde out of jail in Waco. Uh, the story goes that she had one of these taped to her thigh when she busted Clyde out of the Waco jail and uh, he went on another spree. Now, Bonnie Parker was a pretty small woman. They say she was about 4'11", I believe. And so I don't imagine she had much of a thigh. So you can imagine, that says something for the concealability of the gun. This unique period in American history was marked by a desire to win at all costs, setting these gangsters apart from any other criminal element. But what drove these men and women to become so heavily armed? The simple answer lies in two potent forces of that era, alcohol and greed. 
Well, people continue to drink. Uh, overall, in the United States, drinking may have gone down very marginally, but this meant now bootleggers were supplying that liquor. People made enormous money in now the illicit traffic. So really, prohibition spawned this era. With the enactment of the Volstead Act and the onset of prohibition, the stage was set for an era of unprecedented criminal opportunity. This legislation, aimed at curbing alcohol consumption, ironically opened floodgates for illicit activities. The nation's thirst for alcohol didn't wane. It merely went underground, and bootleggers rose to meet this demand, amassing fortunes in the process. Meanwhile, in the heartlands of America, a different kind of criminal emerged, the motorized bandit. Icons like Bonnie and Clyde, Pretty Boy Floyd, and Babyface Nelson gained infamy not through the liquor trade, but through a series of audacious bank robberies. Although these bandits lacked the sophistication of their big city counterparts, their notoriety was no less. Interestingly, despite the prevailing image of rampant violence and lawlessness, this era was, in many respects, among the most crime-free periods in American history. Historians point out that crimes against ordinary citizens were relatively rare during this time. The violent encounters, often sensationalized, primarily involved rival gangs or confrontations with lawmen. To understand the full impact of this era, one must delve deeper into the societal changes brought about by prohibition. This period inadvertently spawned a new breed of criminal, one who saw immense profit in the forbidden allure of alcohol. The Volstead Act, while well-intentioned, inadvertently laid the foundation for an underground economy, rife with opportunity for those daring enough to exploit it. When the gangsters and outlaws killed people, they were from rival gangs or they were lawmen. In the late 1920s, uh, my mother told me my, that uh, with my father, they would walk through Central Park to after-hours clubs up in Harlem with never a thought of danger. There, there was no such thing as mugging. There was no such thing as rape. That would have outraged the community. As these criminals rose in prominence, so too did their need for more effective means of protection and aggression. The streets became a battleground where firepower often dictated survival. This led to an arms race of sorts, with gangsters and lawmen constantly seeking an edge through more advanced weaponry. BARs, Thompson submachine guns, uh, high-powered hunting rifles, handguns of all sorts, uh, plus a number of weapons that they modified themselves. They didn't attack, for the most part, the average citizen. Most of their great gun battles were with lawmen. And many times they came out on the winning side of that gun batter, battle. Uh, they had magnificent escapes with all odds stacked against them. And so I think Americans in general tend to romanticize figures such as that who take on the establishment with nothing but their own guile, their own courage, their own nerve. Amidst this turbulent backdrop, the media played a pivotal role in shaping public perception. Gangsters were often romanticized, their violent acts sensationalized, creating a complex tapestry of fear, admiration, and intrigue among the American public. As the 1930s drew to a close, so did the era of the gangster, the repeal of prohibition advancements in law enforcement, and changing societal values all contributed to the decline of these once feared figures. Yet their legacy endures, immortalized in the annals of American history, a testament to a time when the nation was held captive by the sights and sounds of the gangster gun.
thank you for joining us on this journey through history on the World History Channel. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the fascinating stories and events that have shaped our world. If you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. By subscribing to our channel, you'll never miss out on any of our future content, covering everything from ancient civilizations to modern day events. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover next. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us continue to create engaging and educational content for you. So remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment, and together, let's keep exploring the captivating stories of our world. Thank you for watching the World History Channel.